So it's Christmas day and you've just got yourself a new gaming PC and you need to know how to set it up. Or maybe you got money for Christmas instead and you're looking to buy a system. Either way, you need to know how to set it up so you want to stick around for my, my tips and tricks on how to do that, the, the fast and simple and hassle-free ways. But if you're in that latter category and you're looking to buy a system, then you want to stick around to check out our, this video sponsor, Overclocks UK and their new pre-built line of systems. There are three options for you to choose from, including an RTX 3070 system that, at least at the time of filming, is in stock and you can buy today. And because they are pre-built, you don't need to wait for them to be built to then send out. They are ready to ship, so they'll get to you as fast as is humanly possible. They also come with a comprehensive three-year warranty and standard, so if you're interested in picking up a new gaming PC, check them out with the link in the description below. Right, so the first thing we have to do is get it out of its box. Now, overclockers actually do a really good job at packaging systems. That's not because they're paying me to say that. I legitimately think it's. Um, so we have a couple of extra layers of protection as well as a box that the PC is in as well as the extra components and then you have the box with the PC in it itself as well. So let's get these sort of straps off, get the top covers off, and then we can get into the, the first layer of our unboxing experience. As you're getting the system out of the box, uh, you'll find that if you buy one of these Overclock UK systems, you get this really nice setup guide, including the specific report on your system, which even comes with the quality control checklist and the guy who signed its name, which is actually one of the people that you would speak to when, if you were to have any problems with your system, which is one of the really nice things about buying from clockers in general. Now, the first thing when you get your system out, you will need to do is remove the packaging material that's on the inside. This stuff helps make sure that your graphics card especially doesn't break the slot that it sits in in your motherboard during transit or even just break it clean off as that happens a lot without this sort of packing. And so you need to remove it before you can start your system up. Now in this actual case, case uh, there is just a nice little pull tab which opens the door on a hinge and then you can pull it straight out. You will also want to do the peel, um, which is very satisfying. So here's a shot of, of me doing it and you can enjoy that yourself as well. So with that out of the way, we're pretty much ready to fire the system up. Now to do that, we need to connect well, things like power, display, or keyboard and mice, and any other peripherals you want, and even things like internet, depending on how you want to do it. Now let's run through how to do that. Power is the one that's at the very bottom. It's the three pin connector, um, often called a kettle lead, and uh, that plugs in only in one direction. You will also want to connect your display. Now, the way you do this is by connecting it to your graphics card, which is the port sort of in the middle of the system. You may have display options, things like an HDMI port up at the top by your USB ports, but you don't want to use those as if you use those top ones, you aren't gonna be using your graphics card and therefore you won't be able to play games very well. So make sure you plug in down in that sort of middle slot um, where your graphics card is. You will also want to plug in things like your USB mice and keyboards and any other peripherals like headsets you want or speakers and Ethernet if you want to use a wired connection as well for internet. Once everything is hooked up, you can press the power button and the system should fire into life and boot into Windows. Now I'm gonna go set up a monitor so that I can walk you through the rest of this, so bear with me. So once you've got everything plugged in, uh, you can turn the system on and you'll be greeted with the usual Windows setup form. Now, a small hint, if you don't want to use a Microsoft account when you log into Windows and you want to instead use a local uh, sort of standard account, if you like, then make sure that if you're using Ethernet, you disconnect it for this initial setup 
or if you're using Wi-Fi, click the I don't have internet option when you go through the setup and it will let you use a local account instead of a Microsoft one. If you do want to use a Microsoft account though, that's fine and just make sure that you're connected or you connect to your Wi-Fi when you uh, go through this process. It's pretty simple, you generally just press next or yes for most of the time. Uh, you can pick your keyboard layouts. In this case, uh, because the system does have Wi-Fi but I don't want to use a Microsoft account, I'm going to click I don't have internet, continue with limited setup, and then you can enter a name. In this case, I'm just going to put OCUK since this is their system. Uh, you can put in a password if you want to, and then select your, your preferences for all of the different uh, trackings and options, diagnostic datas. Generally, I click no or the, the lower option of the two for everything, but you can click whatever you fancy. You can also enable or disable Cortana, and then it will boot itself up and we can go from there. Now, once you're connected to the internet, one of the first things you'll want to do is start installing all of your usual programs and games. Now, happily, there is a simple tool that can make it really easy. It's a website called Ninites, and when you go to their site, you can pick all of the programs that you want to install all at once with just one downloader. You don't need to go to each individual site and install everything. So pick your web browsers. In my case, I'm gonna pick Chrome, but personally, I think I use five different ones now, so you've got some options. Uh, you also want things like Discord. I'd recommend VLC, of course, Spotify, if you want that. Uh, you also have other options, of course, Steam here. I'd recommend 7-Zip, that's a really useful one. And I do generally recommend Notepad and Everything, which is a great Windows search replacement because that's not always great. And then you click Get Your Nine Eyes and it will download. You run it and it auto installs all of the programs that you've selected all in one go all automatically. You will still have to download things like Battle.net or Ubisoft Connect or Origin separately if you want to use those, but those are fairly easy to get. You just Google for Battle.net or Ubisoft Connect and download the installer for that specific application. When it comes to installing all of your games, you can either do it the slow way, which is by manually downloading each of the games onto the new PC, or you can shortcut it a bit because if you already have an old system with some games on it, or maybe a laptop that you've been gaming on for a while that has some games installed, then you can use those game files on your new system. Now with Steam, there's a couple of, of hoops you have to jump through and it's not always perfect. It may still download the game anyway, but it is generally worth trying. Now you want to copy the game files to the new system and you can do that a number of ways. The easiest way if you have a, say, old hard drive that has those games on it is to take the side panel off with the system off, uh, plug SATA power in and a SATA cable and one side into the motherboard, and then boot the system back up and just directly copy those game files over. Or if you don't have an external hard drive or something like that, then you can use a USB stick. In my case, I have a Samsung T1 um, that's big enough to fit a good number of games on it. So you can plug that in and copy the files that way. Or if you want to get a bit more adventurous, then you can have a Windows share with either the old games uh, you know, driver system uh, up and running and directly copy over the network or vice versa and have your old system copy the games to a new one. That's a bit more of an involved process than I can show here. So I'll leave a full link to a guide in the description you can check out if you want to go that route. Either way, copy your game files to your new system and then we can go from there. Now, while your files are copying over, especially if you have a configuration like this where you have an SSD and a hard drive and you generally want to use the larger hard drive to store your games, then you'll need to go to Steam and create a new Steam library on that drive. It's pretty simple. Once you've logged into Steam, press the Steam button in the top left, settings, and then downloads. You can press the top button for Steam library folders, add a library folder and pick your other drive and create a new folder there. It'll automatically uh, create a name for you. Steam library generally works fine. Press select and 
For an added bonus, if you right click on that new folder and click make default folder, then that means that you don't have to manually tell games to install to that one instead of to install to your C drive instead. So once all of your game files have copied across, you can then go and install them as if they weren't there. I know it's a bit confusing, but in this case, I copied CSGO. And so uh, when you press install, tell it to install to where you've already copied the game files to. When you click next, it will say that it's preparing files for install, and then it will switch to saying discovering existing game files, and it should find all of the files and it might have to do a few tweaks and especially if you haven't updated the game in a little while it will do all of the updates and like I said there is a chance that it won't uh, and it will just wholly download itself again I think that might be what it's doing now but uh, it's better not to, to try it does work more often than not for me personally so yeah, worth a shot. In something like Battle.net though, it works a lot better. When you first log in, you will be prompted to scan for any existing games. You can click locate and tell it where you copied the game files to. So in my case, COD Modern Warfare, you would click accept and then it would locate the game files. And as long as the game is up to date, it will be immediately playable. The same goes for the uh, Ubisoft Connect player launcher where for example if you wanted to install Watch Dogs uh, Legion then you would go to that game and click locate installed game again find the game files and it should work just fine. Now if you're using a high refresh rate monitor like I am you will want to make sure that it's set to run at that higher refresh rate as by default it doesn't normally. You will want to make sure that using the correct cable. Generally speaking, DisplayPort cables offer more compatibility with higher refresh rate displays and uh, generally work a little bit more seamlessly than HDMI. But if you have an HDMI display, maybe you're running on the living room TV and maybe it can do 4K 120Hz. Well, you can use an HDMI cable for that instead if that's what you have. Either way, you need to set it up in Windows. And so you want to right click on the desktop, click display settings, and then scroll down to the advanced display settings. And uh, if you have a, a most recent Windows update, you can set it right here. In my case, 165 Hertz. Or uh, if not, then you can click the display adapter properties, click monitor, and then set the refresh rate there. Click OK, and you should be all good to go. While you're in the Windows setting page, it is a good idea to go to the root of the settings and click update and make sure that all of the Windows updates are done. That ensures that everything is going to work uh, as, as optimally as it can, keep your PC nice and secure. And so good to do that. Also, you can go to the NVIDIA driver and open GeForce Experience and sign into that to check if you need uh, a driver update. That will automatically uh, notify you of any driver updates that need doing, and it makes it really simple to download and install it. It's just two button presses to install a new driver. So if you're using a NVIDIA card, that's a very good way to keep up to date as well. So that's the majority of how to set up a new gaming PC. There is one other troubleshooting step I would mention, which is that if you're starting to install or run programs, uh, often I get an error for something like MSPCV 140 DLL is missing. What you need to do there is download and install VC Redist, uh, both the x86 and the x64 versions, and then that should clear that error up for you. So if you are looking to buy a PC with your Christmas money or whenever else, I suppose, then definitely check out Overclockers UK's pre-built systems. Like I said, they're linked in the description down below, and there are three different options, including an RTX 3070 system, this very one, uh, that, like I said, they're all pre-built, they're all ready and waiting to be shipped out, so they can be shipped out ASAP without any delay for having them built. Also, the people who are building your systems, A, I didn't realize this, but Clockers have been open for 21 years and selling and building PCs, so they have a lot of experience behind them. And the people who build your systems are the same people who will be helping you if you ever have any issues, so they will know how to help you very quickly. Like I said, thank you to Overclock UK for sponsoring this video. They keep, uh, they help make this channel a viable thing and keep these videos coming out. So thank you to them and thank you to you. Feel free to check them out in the description down below. And otherwise, I hope you have a great Christmas.